Hello and welcome to the St. Matthew's online worship service. My name is Joe, I'm the curate here, and this is Colin, our interpreter, and we'll be leading you through our worship today. We're currently halfway through a short series entitled Reflections on a Difficult Year. And last week we were thinking about lamentation, and if you've missed that one, then feel free to go back on the YouTube page and find it. And today we're thinking about perseverance, and we'll have a reflection from Izzy later on. And these services are they're designed to help us reflect on times of trial and times of strain, flowing from lamentation through perseverance and into hope. And, and through this, we acknowledge the place of sorrow and grief while never losing the hope that we see in Jesus. Before we begin, we have a few notices. Obviously, during this second lockdown, we're not allowed to meet for worship in the church building, but the church will be open for private prayer on Wednesdays between 10 and 12, and our online worship services will continue as normal. I'd also like to flag up our online pastoral team, and you can email them at any time at online at stmatthewswalsall.co.uk. And I really would encourage you to, to use that resource if, you, if you're feeling like you need some support, whether it's to do with church or otherwise, to do with these services or otherwise, please do send them an email and you'll be prayed for and perhaps spoken to. We also have our parish Christmas card, which is now available and needs distributing to all of the people in the parish. If you are able to be involved in the distribution of these Christmas cards, then please go over to our website and register your interest and pick a road. And I hear they are going fast, so get there quickly. Even though our church building isn't in as much use as it normally is, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And John Edlin has promised that if you can get in touch with him, giving him some of your time, he can find a job for you to do. And it sounds like there's lots of maintenance that needs doing. So if you've got the time, if you've got the energy, then get in touch with John and find yourself a job to do in the church. Let's begin our worship with a prayer. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
This week we are looking at perseverance. Perseverance is continuing with something, even though it might be really difficult. Moses and the Ten Plagues An angel spoke to Moses from the burning bush and said, God says, return to Egypt and tell Pharaoh the king to let my people go. And so they did, but Pharaoh said, I won't let your people go. So Moses took his stick and hit the water and it turned into blood. All the fish died and no one could drink the water. So Aaron and Moses returned to Pharaoh and asked the same. But he said, I won't let your people go. God then made frogs everywhere in Egypt and they hopped in the pans of food and everywhere. They went to Pharaoh the king for a third time and asked him again, but he said no. So God sent a load of gnats down to Egypt. Again, they asked, let my people go. Pharaoh said no. So God sent down to Egypt swarms of buzzing flies. The fifth time, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and asked the same. But Pharaoh said, no, I will not let your people go. So God sent a disease to kill all the cattle. Again, they pleaded with Pharaoh, let our people go. He replied, no. So God covered everyone in Egypt with boils all over their body and face. The brothers continued to ask Pharaoh to let their people go, but he continued to say no. So God sent a hailstorm to Egypt. Moses and Aaron asked for the eighth time, let my people go, but he said no. So God sent locusts down to earth and covered all of Egypt. They hopped everywhere and ate all of the leaves. The brothers begged Pharaoh to let their people go, but again he said no. So God sent Egypt into darkness. Nobody could see anything for three days, but God gave light to the Israelites where they lived. For the tenth time, Moses said, let my people go. But Pharaoh said no. Every family's firstborn child was killed, including the king's firstborn son. Finally, after all these terrible things happened, Pharaoh said, I will let the Israelites go. So Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and they were freed. From this story, we learn that Moses and Aaron cared for the Israelites. They continued to do as God has asked them to do. They persevered and they were obedient to God. This morning, you could have a try at making some mini beast stones. You'll need some paint and some stones from the garden. We have learnt a little bit about the ten plagues of Egypt and one of those plagues was locusts. You could start by drawing a locust on one of your stones and then think of some other mini beasts too. Time to pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. Quiet in my mind as I pray. Help me to listen to what you say and follow you every day. Teach me when and what to say 
to those I meet in my day. Help me to know what is true and help others to find you. Father God, it's hard when things are tough and sometimes it's hard to keep trying when everything seems to be going wrong. Please help us to never give up and to always persevere. Please help us to be people who encourage others and thank you Lord that you never give up on us. Amen. and actions that we know aren't good and aren't good representations of God and we offer them to God and we say God we're sorry for this please help us to be more Christ-like please help us to represent you in the world better Saint Paul says be imitators of God love as Christ loved do not grieve the Holy Spirit Put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice. So let us confess our sins to God, who forgives us in Christ. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. We've seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We've condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We've heard the good news of Christ but failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. 
We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbour as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, please hear our prayers this morning. Help us to put aside any weariness of spirit, to rejoice at being in your presence and to feel your love for us. If we chafe at restrictions in place during this lockdown, help our spirits to soar free beyond what we see in this world, to look forward to a future life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your blessing on the church. We ask that the wisdom of the clergy will increase and be a blessing to their flocks and that we all take responsibility for being good followers. We give thanks for our own leadership team at St Matthew's and ask that you will continue to inspire them in how best to share your message to the congregation and to a wider Walsall. We also thank you for the skills you have given the people who pull together this online service, which reaches well beyond the parish boundaries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be present wherever national governments take important decisions. You know the range of crises that different governments worldwide are facing and we beg that they will make good decisions for all people and the environment. We ask that good relationships can be built and strengthened, and that trade agreements can be drawn up so that nobody feels they have been disadvantaged. In these challenging times for all leaders, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our town, we ask that we can make our contribution to the reduction in cases of COVID-19, so that we may interact with each other safely and with less fear of infection. We give praise for the work of scientists who have produced a vaccine in record time. We pray that it will work well and safely. We ask that the efforts made in our Blue Coat schools, in local businesses and in the NHS to keep our immediate environments clear and infection free bear fruit, so that the virus spread is reduced and the need for any further restriction is minimised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for everyone who is suffering, not only from this new disease, but from other illnesses that incapacitate and depress, especially if hospitals are concentrating on COVID-19 to the detriment of other conditions. We also pray for those suffering in isolation who feel unable to bear their loneliness and distress. Lord Jesus, you healed people and cast out tormenting demons from many people when you were on the earth. We ask that you do the same now and give peace to those who so desperately need it. We pause and name to you now those people who we know are struggling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your blessing on those who have left our presence to be with you in heaven. Father, you are our hope, our salvation, our light, our glory. Be with those who mourn and comfort them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for this Sunday, the third before Advent. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when wars shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the presence of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we say a prayer to discern God's vision for St Matthew's. Father God, who set the world in motion, you inspired our predecessors to build St Matthew's Church as a symbol of Christian faith on the skyline of Walsall. You guided them to teach, 
serve and proclaim your kingdom of love in words and actions to the people of this town. As we seek to discern your direction for us for the next stage of the journey, may your Holy Spirit guide those in leadership at this church. Open our hearts to your call in our lives, both as individuals and as the church. Help us to see the world through your eyes and proclaim your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And we finish with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the vital work of worship and service at St. Matthew's is not free, and it's only able to carry on because of your generous giving. Uh, if you'd like to know more about how to give to the work of the church, then head over to our website, or we'll soon have a short informational video. But it's not only monetary giving that is important to the church. The church also needs you to give your time and your energy. And we're very grateful to our dedicated teams of people who do just that. And if you'd like to know more about how you can get involved uh, in church work, then again, head over to the website under the Get Involved tab, you'll find some information. Or perhaps you might like to give John Edwin a call and he can give you some work to do. We'll have a short pause now for reflection and consideration and you'll see some more information on how you can give. And after that, we'll have our Bible readings and Izzy will bring us a reflection on perseverance. The first reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly, Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we've renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, 
persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. And this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the 5th of August 2010, the Chilean mining accident began with a cave-in at the copper gold mine. 33 men were trapped 700 metres below ground, five kilometres away from the mine entrance, with no way to escape. Initially, the trapped miners tried to escape through ventilation shafts, but the ladders required by safety codes were not there. They gathered in a space called the Refuge and sent out teams of men to find an exit route, but there was none. Accepting their situation, the men then prepared for survival. Emergency food supplies were stocked in the shelter that were intended to last two to three days, but with no way of knowing how long they were going to be there, they rationed the food and they just waited to be rescued. Although our situation during this pandemic is not as desperate as the situation that the Chilean miners found themselves in, I'm going to use the imagery of being trapped to help us explore our topic of perseverance. Some of the miners' feelings, though more extreme, may echo our feelings. When will this end? When will I be able to see loved ones again? Should I dare to hope? Above ground, rescuers had begun to drill exploratory boreholes to find the men. After 14 days of searching, the men were discovered alive. The miners had attached a note to a drill that entered their room that said, all 33 of us are fine. This borehole was then used to supply the men with food, requested items from home and communication with the world above ground. And finally, after 69 days in the mine, all 33 men were rescued. This fascinating true story of the miners contains three ideas for us to learn from today. One of the things that must have helped the miners persevere was the knowledge that a rescue attempt was underway above ground. There was the world above them that was unseen to them, but was also sustaining them and would ultimately save them. This is our first key to be able to persevere. We have to know that God, who we cannot see, is on our side, rescuing us, sustaining us and saving us. Corrie ten Boom lived in Holland through World War II and launched a network that smuggled Jews to safe houses around the country. After dodging detection for years, the family were arrested by the Gestapo and her and her sister were brought to a concentration camp in Germany. They were crammed into a barracks infested by fleas. They witnessed mothers losing their babies just hours after giving birth and the systematic execution of their fellow prisoners. Corrie ten Boom's story has gone on to be read by millions. In it she writes, life in the concentration camp took place on two separate levels, mutually impossible. One, the observable external life, grew every day more horrible. 
the other, the life we lived with God, grew daily better, truth upon truth, glory upon glory. For the miners, their observable external life was dark and limited. And our life during this pandemic and lockdown is limited and it may at some times feel dark. But as Christians, our life takes place on two separate levels. Our natural earthly life run, runs alongside the spiritual realm where even in deepest darkness, we can experience the light of Christ. This is what's described in the 2 Corinthians passage. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. This knowledge will help us to persevere. In the spiritual realm, we cannot see. Jesus intercedes for us at God's right hand. The victory is already won and our rescue is underway. Once the miners had accepted that their fate was in the hands of the people above ground, each of them began to take on particular roles and responsibilities. One drew maps of the tunnels they could access to help with the rescue. One became the spiritual leader and held daily prayer meetings. One became the medic because of having some medical training from caring for his grandmother. One became the energetic host of the miners' video journals to reassure the outside world that they were doing okay. As they persevered, they developed a strength of character. Similarly, when we go through trials, as the Romans passage says, we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. James 1 verse 2 to 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Whenever we go through trials and suffering, it develops perseverance in us. God is in the process of transforming us to be more like Jesus. That's the work that perseverance has a hand in accomplishing. We grow in spiritual maturity as we accept with joy any suffering in our lives and allow God to strengthen his character in us. Also, in a similar way to the miners, as we mature in faith, we will find roles in the church that suit our God-given gifts and character. Let perseverance finish its work. You will mature into the person God created you to be in order to fulfil his purposes in the earth to his glory. Take Joseph, for example. You can read about his story at the end of Genesis. He seemed like a pretty spoilt and arrogant teenager. His father favoured him over his brothers. And after having a God given dream, he told his brothers that one day he would rule over them and they would bow down to him. So the brothers sold him into slavery and told his dad he got killed by wild animals. Fast forward 13 years, after being wrongly accused of raping his master's wife and getting sent to prison, he interprets Potiphar's dream and prophesies seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. Instantly, he's elevated to the position of prime minister of Egypt where he organises and deploys the relief efforts for the whole of Egypt in the famine. People from all over the place come to him to beg for food, including his brothers who bow down before him. 17-year-old Joseph might have at the very least said, I told you so. But an undeserved 13-year sentence in prison after being a slave had allowed perseverance to do a work in Joseph that meant he had humility and character to both lead a country and weep with his brothers as they were reconciled. When perseverance does its work, 
we become more like Jesus and we step into our God-given purpose. What gave the miners the strength to persevere? What was their reason to survive? What was their reason to live? I suspect it was the prospect of seeing loved ones again, their wives, their children and families. They were motivated by love. The miners had to fix their eyes on their loved ones, who they could not see, in order to endure. Hebrews 12 says, And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is the unseen one that we fix our eyes on in order to endure. He is the pioneer of our faith. He's gone before us. He has experienced temptation and deepest suffering. He's the perfecter of our faith, giving us everything we need for life and godliness. He endured the torture of the cross because of the joy set before him. What was the joy set before him? It was us. His loved ones, his children. The joy set before him was the completed calling of reconciling the world to himself, of being reunited with us. His motivation was love and his love for us gave him the strength to endure the cross. The final way that we will persevere is though we cannot see God to fix our eyes on him. For the joy set before us of knowing Jesus and eventually being reunited with him in the fullness of heaven, we can endure. Just as the miners put their confidence in their rescuers, grew in character through their suffering, and fixed their eyes on the ones they loved. So we look to Jesus through our persevering. Let perseverance finish its work in you through this trialing time. Amen. In response to what we've heard, we'll say the creed together, and it's that timeless declaration of faith that's been said through the centuries and reminds us that regardless of our situation or circumstance or place or position in the world, we're all united through this belief in the one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
That's all for this online service. As always, we will be back here, same time, same place, next week. And in the meantime, if you'd like to get in touch, you can email me, the curate, or Jim, our rector. And of course, there is our online pastoral team and the church office as well. And you can email all of us at these email addresses here. If you don't receive our bulletin or our newsletter updates, then you can go, go ahead and register for that over at the website. And you can also get our monthly prayer diary there as well. Great resources for staying in touch. Of course, we'll have our Zoom coffee and catch up after this service. And the details for that are uh, available in the live chat just off to the side. We'll close with this prayer. God of power. May the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gift of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you, now and always. Amen.